so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Bob Ferguson, and uh, we have a large group here uh, because we have an important announcement uh, that today we're filing a lawsuit challenging the Trump administration's rules that undermine the Endangered Species Act, a cornerstone of national conservation law. Essentially, what the Trump administration is trying to do is do something they can't achieve by going through Congress. They know they can't get this through Congress because the Endangered Species Act is so popular. As a result, they're trying to do this through the back door and through a rulemaking process. We filed our lawsuit today in the Northern District of California, joining attorneys general from across the country to challenge President Trump's unlawful efforts to weaken protections for animals and plants facing extinction, including cherished and sacred species here in Washington State. This is our 50th lawsuit against the Trump administration. The Endangered Species Act, as many of you know, is critical to Washington State's efforts to save species such as the southern resin orca and several species of salmon such as Chinook and sockeye. The new rules increase the likelihood that these species will lose their federal protections before they have fully recovered. I'm joined today by a number of folks, and I, I want to take a moment just to introduce uh, many of the folks who are here because it reflects such a uh, range of organizations uh, that work so hard uh, on behalf of Washingtonians and our environment here in Washington State. Uh, so first, four speakers who will be following me, uh, Samish Indian Nation Chairman Tom Wooden, Snoqualmie Indian Tribe Vice Chair Michael Ross, Becky Kelly, who is the President of the Washington Environmental Council, and State Representative Joe Fitzgibbon, who is the Chair of the House Environmental Committee. Uh, other folks who are here as well include State Senator Reuben Carlisle of the 36th District. Uh, we have representatives from the Washington State Department of Fish and Wildlife, including Pecky Becker, the Wildlife Diversity Division Manager, Hannah Anderson, who is the Listing and Recovery Section Manager. They obviously do very important work on behalf of the state. Charlie Wilkinson, the Interim Executive Director and Development Director for the Audubon of Washington. Uh, Joshua Morris, also from Audubon. Claire Catania, Interim Executive Director and Development Director of Seattle Audubon. Mitch Friedman, Executive Director of Conservation Northwest. Kristen Boyles, Earth Justice Attorney. Sophia Ressler, Washington Wildlife Attorney, Center for Biological Diversity. Dan Paul, Washington State Director of the Humane Society. Rob Smith, Northwest Regional Director, National Parks Conservation Association. Rob took the ferry over this morning from Bainbridge Island, and the ferry stopped, he said, for uh, 10 or 15 minutes to watch orcas passing by, which was uh, a delight that I hope to, uh, to have someday. Uh, Alex Craven, National Forest and Wildlands Organizer of the Sierra Club. We also have representatives from the Woodland Park Zoo, including Kirsten Schwartz, Senior Public Affairs and Advocacy Manager, Farah Paul, and Rubai Aurora. Uh, also joined by Steve De Los Angeles of the Snoqualmie Tribal Council and Christopher Castleberry, also the Snoqualmie Tribal Council. Uh, my legal team is here as well, uh, as always, uh, two folks in particular, there's a team that works in all these cases, two folks in, protect, in particular, Bill Sherman, Bill is the Council for Environmental Protection Chief, we have a team in our office that does environmental work, Bill's the head of that, also joined by Special Assistant Attorney General Aurora Jonke. Uh, if there are questions about the specific case, uh, it's Aurora you'll likely see answering specific questions, she's been very involved in this litigation. So what I'm going to do first is explain uh, why the Trump administration's rules undermine the Endangered Species Act, including their impact on species here in Washington State. Then I'll explain briefly why we believe these rules are unlawful. Uh, we'll give an overview of our lawsuit uh, that we filed with the multi-state coalition. Then you'll hear from our speakers, and then we'll be happy to take any questions you might have. So Congress enacted the Endangered Species Act in 1973. It had it was wildly popular, strong bipartisan support. It passed the U.S. Senate unanimously, was signed into law by Richard Nixon. The U.S. Supreme Court has called the Endangered Species Act, quote, the most comprehensive legislation for the preservation of endangered species ever enacted by any nation. The law works. Since the law's passage, 99% of species that have received its protections have been saved from the brink of extinction nationwide including the peregrine falcon, the gray whale, the bald eagle, and the grizzly bear. Washington State is home to 49 species listed under the Act, including southern resident orcas, green sea turtles, and several salmon species, excuse me, several salmon species. The Endangered Species Act is critical to protecting threatened and endangered species right here in Washington State. For example, 
These federal protections are essential to Washington's efforts to save southern resident killer whales. As of August 2019, only 73 southern resident killer whales remain, a 30-year low. To understand how outrageous these new proposed rules are, you need to know a bit about how the Endangered Species Act works. The law requires the federal government to create lists of endangered species, those who are on the brink of extinction, and threatened species, those are species at risk of becoming endangered. The federal government is then required to designate critical habitat, in other words, protected habitat that is essential to the conservation of endangered or threatened species. Once the species has recovered, the federal government can remove or delist the species from the list of federally protected species. The Endangered Species Act provides protections against activity that might harm or kill listed species or threaten their habitat. On August 27th, the United States Fish and Wildlife Service and the National Marine Fisheries Service published three separate rules that unlawfully weaken essential protections under the Endangered Species Act. All three rules, in our view, weaken protection of endangered and threatened species, and the rules will go into effect tomorrow. All three rules have multiple com components into harm in multiple ways, so we're going to keep this at a high level. but. The way I would describe this, the way my team would describe it, is these rules, um, it's a death by a thousand cuts for the Endangered Species Act. So we'll give you a couple of examples. First, the rules make it harder to designate critical habitat for endangered species, which removes a critical protection for animals at risk of extinction. Second, the rules eliminate species recovery as a key basis for removing a species from the list. If that sounds counterintuitive, there's a good reason for it, it's because it makes no sense. The new rules increase the likelihood that species will be delisted and lose their federal protections before they have fully recovered. In other words, orcas or salmon could lose federal protections when they still need those protections to ensure their long-term health and even their survival. Third, the rules also remove a prohibition on economic assessments when the federal government decides whether to list a species as threatened or endangered. In other words, the new proposed regulations allow economic information to influence the agency's listing decisions. But the Endangered Species Act itself requires those listing decisions to be made based on science, not economics. Fourth, for species that are added to the threatened list from here on out, the rules also unlawfully eliminate the blanket automatic protections barring activity, barring activity that might harm or kill them. This provision will also impact current endangered species. Any endangered species that may recover enough to be downlisted to threatened status would lose those automatic blanket protections. Lastly, the rules make it harder to list species as threatened so they can get the protections they need in order to recover. For example, wolverines, a candidate species, are currently under consideration for federal protection. The new rules make it harder for the wolverines to get those protections. There are less than 20 wild wolverines living in the wild in Washington State, less than 20. They are native to Arctic and mountain climates, and they are particularly susceptible to climate change. Given this and their low population in Washington State, they will likely need to find new habitat to, habitat to survive and recover. The new rules make it more difficult to protect critical habitat that species like wolverines may depend on due to climate change. Briefly, I'll explain why we think these rules are unlawful. By law, federal agencies cannot propose rules that contradict laws passed by Congress. The Trump administration is fond of doing this, and we beat them in court multiple times for enacting rules that are inconsistent with existing federal law. Each of the new rules that we've talked about conflict with the Endangered Species Act, which prioritizes species conservation and recovery. Furthermore, the law requires federal agencies to provide good, rational reasons for changing regulations. They can't act in an arbitrary fashion, for example. But the federal government did not do that here. The federal government's justification fell woefully short of their obligations under the law in violation of the Administrative Procedure Act. The Administrative Procedure Act is an act that we have challenged the administration on time after time again and been successful each and every time. In addition, the federal government violated the National Environmental Policy Act, another bedrock environmental law, by refusing to evaluate the environmental impacts of the new rules. So in short, we are asking the court 
to declare these fundamentally un unlawful rules invalid and to block their implementation. So I'm going to do now is turn to our additional speakers, uh, starting with Chairman Wooten, uh, and then we'll be, have time to take your questions. And if there are folks on the phone who have a question, uh, we'll turn uh, to you as well. Uh, Chairman Wooten. Thanks for being here, Chairman. Bet. Senator Snap, Tom Wooten. My name is Tom Wooten. Uh, CCM, Hayushka Atia Skap, Ula Scotland, Huanang. I asked the creator to thank us, for, or thank the creator for this day. We're here in lockstep with the state of Washington. Before 1855, when the Treaty of Point Elliot was signed, we were the stewards of this great land that we all reside in. And after the treaty, things were promised to us. We want to keep those promises, and this is part of it. Our relatives out there are swimming around in the water, the Kukwalamichin, the, the killer whales that were also near and dear to our hearts. We heard about them this morning from the folks that are here. They are important. Everything's important. We all have a responsibility here as residents of the state, not just leaders here, but we all have a play in the game here. And when these things happen, we have to step up. And we're honored to be here today to be in lockstep with the state of Washington's attorney general in filing this important lawsuit. So with that, I'll turn this over to my good friend, Michael. As uh, Chairman Wooten just uh, precluded to, the Snoqualmie tribe was a uh, original s signatory to the Tr Point Elliott Treaty uh, in 1855 with the United States of America. We fought to ensure that the tribe would have salmon runs and protection over natural resources. This Trump administration is jeopardizing this sacred commitment to all the tribes of Washington State and throughout the nation. This Endangered Species Act protects sacred orca whales, Chinook, Chum, and Sockeye salmon. And our people used to walk across rivers and streams on the backs of the abundant salmon. We used to feed off of and gain sustenance year round from the kokanee, the little red fish in Lake Sammamish and the streams and rivers surrounding Lake Sammamish. And now we just pray that we can keep the status quo and that our children can live to see the survival of the sacred salmon against our negligence. We are the eighth generation descendants of the Point Elliot Treaty, and we are possibly the last generation to be able to protect this sacred treaty and these sacred lands from degradation that we continue to enact upon these, these species. We are running out of time and these changes are in the right direction. So that's why we're here today to give our full support for Attorney General Ferguson and filing a lawsuit against the Trump administration's changes to the ESA. I appreciate your time, and I hope it's not too late. Thank you. Uh, I'm Joe Fitzgibbon, a, a state representative uh, and a chair of the House Environment and Energy Committee in Olympia. Um, I'm here today because the Endangered Species Act is one of our nation's bed bedrock environmental protections. It's truly the most successful environmental law that we have on the books. It's responsible for recovery of some of the species that matter most to us as Americans and matter to also matter ecologically as well as culturally. The grizzly bear, the bald eagle, the humpback whale. If you're one of the fortunate Washingtonians who's had the opportunity to see uh, humpback whales in Puget Sound this summer, uh, you have the Endangered Species Act to thank. It's truly a very successful law. Uh, and that's why its rollback is so threatening to the species uh, that, we, that we hold dear as Washingtonians. Species like our southern resident killer whales, like our Chinook and sockeye salmon, like steelhead, um, those species are at risk by rolling back the protections that the Endangered Species Act uh, has provided and that, that have helped some isolated populations of uh, salmon and steelhead uh, to begin the path to recovery. One of the things that's most alarming to me about the rule change proposed by the Trump administration uh, is that at the same time as they are working to roll back protections for our climate and to exacerbate the threat of climate change by encouraging more release of greenhouse gases into our atmosphere, they're denying the ability of their own scientists to look at the impacts of climate change on those species. Now, we know 
already that climate change is having an impact on orcas and on salmon as warmer ocean temperatures make it more difficult for them to find prey uh, and decrease their survival rates. And so at the same time as the Trump administration on one hand is making climate change worse, they're saying we can no longer even evaluate the impacts of climate change um, on the species that, that we hold dear as Washingtonians like our southern resident orcas uh, and our salmon and steelhead. So um, that's why I'm, I'm uh, proud to stand up here this morning uh, as, as the state of Washington fights back against this uh, very detrimental uh, rollback of our basic protections. Good morning. I'm Becky Kelly. I'm with the Washington Environmental Council and Washington Conservation Voters. And I'm happy to be here in support of the Attorney General's action to hold the Trump administration accountable and prevent the rollback of what we've all called, which is one of our country's bedrock environmental laws. Um, I'm grateful to Chairman Wooten and Vice Chairman Ross and Representative Fitzgibbon for their powerful words and their leadership in protecting our environment. Scientists have recently found that across the world, up to one million species are at risk of extinction. The threats they face are the same threats that harm our own lives, polluted water, climate change, deforestation, and damage to natural places. Across Washington State's lands and waters, we have 49 of these plants and animals that are listed. Um, and these species are not just species, they're indicators of whether our rivers and, and uh, streams are healthy, whether Puget Sound and our forests are healthy. We need the Endangered, Spe Endangered Species Act because when species are declining, it tells us that our land, air, and waters are in trouble too. And when the environment is polluted, people suffer. Our culture, our heritage, our food sources, our joy in the outdoors and wildlife, and our economy that relies on a healthy environment. As just one example of that economic benefit of a healthy environment, outdoor recreation contributes over $20 billion to this state's economy every year, and that benefits cities and towns and rural communities across the state. So this is another cynical attempt by the Trump administration to roll back one of our laws, and we see the influence of polluters on corrupt decision makers who give the polluters what they want and leave the rest of us to pay the costs. And that's why it's so important that states like Washington push back and demand that the law be followed and our places, species, and the people and economies who depend on them are protected. We reject the false choice that polluters push, and you'll probably hear it uh, as you hear about this story, that somehow we have to choose between jobs and the environment. We reject that. We know that a strong economy is only possible with a healthy environment, and we can give our kids both. And speaking of our kids, last week, four million people marched across the globe, led by young people, to save their future from climate change. If we allow these species and the air, water, and land they rely on to burn, to be filled with toxic pollution, to die off, how are we gonna tell our kids that we did enough? I can't look my 13-year-old daughter in the eyes and tell her we couldn't save these species. We just couldn't find a way to pass on <coughs> a healthy, beautiful state for you to live in. I know Washingtonians are better than that, and I'm looking forward to Washington State winning this lawsuit and continuing to protect our kids' future. Thanks to all of our speakers. Just a final thought. Um, I think I mentioned this is our 50th lawsuit against the administration. 26 of those lawsuits are all related to one general topic. That topic is the environment. Uh, this is a good example of that work. Um, as many of you know, we have 21 decisions in 21 federal courts across the country, including Washington State. On those 50 lawsuits so far, we have won all 21 of those lawsuits. Uh, I don't file one of these lawsuits unless I feel we have a very good chance of success, and that's the way we feel about this case. And speaking of kids, thanks for mentioning the kids, because uh, one thing I thought about mentioning was uh, I have 11-year-old twins, Jack and Katie, and uh, you know, often I just get them books and, and, uh, and read to them at night. And so several years ago, I picked up a book my son Jack in particular is interested in, in animals. He just he's, is, has a lot of kids that age. And so I picked up a book without thinking too much about it, it was a book actually on endangered species. So endangered species, and, and so I handed it to him one night, and so he was reading it, and he actually became very emotional reading the book, because he knew as a kid, he was young, dinosaurs are extinct. Well, right. some meteor happened, that was a long time ago, and he never saw a dinosaur, right? The zoo were in the wild. So I think he had that in his head, but the concept that there are species now that he knows, right, that he has even seen perhaps in the wild, that those species may go extinct in his lifetime that was another matter entirely for him, another matter entirely. And so you, I, I remember trying to explain to him how that could be, right? And so, you know, I think about that book, and for, you know, my son Jack, someday he'll be reading a book like that to his kids. And if these rules are allowed to go into effect, that book will be thicker because of these changes to these rules. 
that's what's going to happen. And that's what's at stake. Um, as Vice Chairman Ross said, time is running out. That is true. And so I so appreciate the partnership, tribes, the individuals, the organizations, all these lawsuits that we bring. Take my word for it. There is a ton of work uh, that goes on behind the scenes with our partner organizations, the other states, individuals, tribes, you name it. And so I so appreciate that partnership that helps make these cases possible. Uh, with that, we're happy to take any questions uh, that folks in the room may have. And then I'll also see if anyone on the phone has any questions. It, Sir, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> sure. I'll repeat the question so folks uh, here and on the phone can hear it. And I may defer. There are so many folks here have so much expertise on this. I may defer to others who may want to jump in. But the question was, hey, uh, what do we say to critics of the Endangered Species Act who say that the Endangered Species Act uh, may not have been uh, as effective? And so because we have a wealth of expertise here, uh, I'm going to ask Feel free to anyone who wants to come up and take a shot at it, so don't be shy. We've got three species here now. Okay, come on, come, here is, here come right up to the microphone and just introduce yourself. Yeah, it would be great. I'm Mitch Friedman at Conservation Northwest. And even as Washington has become the, the second most populated Western state with the least amount of public land in this booming economy, we now have three species here who weren't here 10, 15 years ago. Uh, Wolverine, who the Attorney General described, they have recolonized as we protected their habitat. They were extirpated, uh, you know, a decade or two ago. Fishers, the state has reintroduced, and wolves have returned on their own thanks to the Protection of Endangered Species Act. And uh, our Northwest Forest Plan, which was put into place not just for spotted owls, but for dozens of other species, is doing us great service. It's not only giving us a fighting chance of keeping those species here, but it's, those large trees are, are keeping a lot of carbon out of the atmosphere. We're doing pretty well in this state. <laughs> Aurora's going to add something on that as well. It's important to remember that the ultimate goal of the Endangered Species Act is recovery, and it's wonderful that many species have been recovered and delisted. But I would say the very true success of the Endangered Species Act is that we still have the biodiversity that we have. And we have preserved a number of species through these protections. And the fact that species continue to need protections is not a reason to roll back those protections. Yes. My understanding was that this law is affecting listings moving forward and that the species that are currently listed are not so affected by that? Do, did I misunderstand it? Or what's the to. distinction between moving forward with species versus currently under the law? There are a number of changes with these new regulations. There's actually three new rules that concern different aspects of the Endangered Species Act and its implementation. One of those is how threatened species will be listed and protected in the future, uh, which might be what you're referring to. Another major change is how agencies, federal agencies, when they are taking action that can impact uh, threatened or endangered species, how those actions are reviewed and how those species that are already listed are protected when the federal government is going to take action and national forests and national parks, uh, when the Navy takes action. And those listed species will be incredibly impacted by the rollbacks of the regulations that are designed to protect endangered and listed species through what's called the interagency consultation process. But there is a distinction between those that are currently listed versus future listings in terms of how they're handled under the law? Uh, they, they are, the, the listed species are protected in different ways than, than species that will be listed in, in the future. Other questions here in the room? Does anybody on the phone have any questions? I, I had a question for Hannah Anderson. I heard that she was in the room. Go right ahead. <laughs> Hannah, come on. <laughs> I think she's nervous, but yes, <laughs> come on up. Yes. The, the question I have is a number of species have been listed. The grizzly bear, uh, which is, I understand, still listed at the state and federal level. The humpback whale, which is still listed at the state and federal level, and a number of others. Are there any species that have been recovered in Washington State in the last two decades? 
Yes, so we have recovered the bald eagle that occurs here in Washington and the peregrine falcon that occurs here in Washington. Um, both of those have been removed from the lists, both state and federal lists in the, in the recent past. Why do you, and then the follow-up is, why do you think uh, we're not seeing a faster rate of recovery for humpback whale, grizzly bear, spotted owl, marble burrow? Well, and I guess I would push back a little bit that we are seeing recovery for some of those species. So certainly humpback whales, we're seeing more animals and uh, someone mentioned this morning of seeing them in the, in the Salish Sea. Recovery takes a long time. So it took a long time for to get them uh, to those depleted populations and it's gonna take a long time for them to um, recover. But we're making progress. Any other questions from the phone? Any final questions from folks here in the room? I have a question that's yep. not on the ESA, though. Uh, I think we should make it quick. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Uh, the GEO group lawsuit. Yeah. Uh, do you have um, any response to the judge's plans? Do they miss, dismiss that or any other recourse that you can take for the judge? Sure. Ha well, happy to chat with you afterwards since it's a, it's a, so obviously we disagree with the judges, uh, where the judge is at, but happy to chat with you afterwards for, for more details on that. Any final questions on the ESA? Uh, this is Gene Johnson with the AP. Yes. Um, quick, quick question. Can, can you just sort of uh, detail where you're going procedurally with this? I mean, these rules are supposed to take effect tomorrow. Are you are you looking for um, any sort of injunctive relief or um, just can you describe that a little bit? Sure. Aurora, Aurora will answer that question for you, Gene. Okay. Uh, at this point, we are not seeking a preliminary injunction on the rules uh, that will be taking effect tomorrow. Uh, the FDA, the Fish and Wildlife Service, and the National Marine Fisheries Service published uh, in the Federal Register a notice that they are delaying the implementation of the interagency consultation rule that I uh, mentioned earlier until late October. Uh, so two of the three new rules will go into effect tomorrow. And so, Gene, just to add to that, this is, this is Bob again, is so no immediate plans on, on filing injunctive relief. Um, as you know, in many of our cases, we have filed for injunctive relief and been successful with that. Each case is its own decision on, on, on what's most appropriate. In general, as you know, getting injunctive relief is extraordinarily difficult, typically in courts. Uh, I think we've been spoiled in large part by getting injunctive relief time after time. Uh, but each case, we, we judge on its merits in terms of uh, whether we go into a court how strong our case is for seeking injunctive relief, uh, which in any context, let alone suing a president, can often be, uh, the hurdle is very high. So that's the type of thing that the AGs will, will communicate on and, and evaluate as time goes forward. But at this point, for right now, filing today in the Northern District of California, uh, but I would not want to rule out any options moving forward uh, on, how we might, uh, on how we might proceed from a litigation strategy standpoint. Thank you. You bet. Any, la any other questions online, on the phone? Any other questions here? How many states are with you on this? Yes. Are you a lead state or how does that work? Yeah, thanks for asking. I probably should have mentioned that. I believe there are 17 states plus the District of Columbia plus New York City. I'm going to make sure I'm not missing anybody. Um, so we're one of those 17 states. The case is being filed in California. Typically where we file the case, that state is typically the lead, right? So uh, in this case, uh, California. and. Uh, so I think of the 50 lawsuits we've filed, we've been the lead state in 16 or 17 of those. We obviously can't be lead on every one of them. We have a fantastic team, but there are limits to the bandwidth, and being a lead state takes, uh, takes quite a bit of bandwidth, as you might imagine. So uh, Aurora, Bill, my team's very active in this litigation, as you might imagine, uh, in helping put the case together for California and, uh, and look forward to participating in that role. Thanks for asking that. I'm sorry if I didn't mention that before. So thanks to all of you for being here. Thanks for those online. Uh, we'll be available afterwards if folks have questions on the ESA or, or other topics as well. Really appreciate your interest. Thanks again to everybody who turned out today. We so appreciate it. Have a great day, everybody.